Hello, this is Robert, and I'm going to be walking through the Microsoft Office New Perspectives Tutorial 3 Case Problem 1 for Access 2010. Go to CM2010 and download the start file and click on Enable Content. On step number one, open the file NP Access 2010 T3 CP1A and your student name. And then do the file Save As and change the last character to a 2. So File, Save Database As, changing the last character of the file name. Making sure you're not changing the actual extension, you're just changing the file name. I'm going to place it on the desktop, so click Desktop, click Save. Enable content. We're now ready to start with the procedures. Step number two. In the teacher table, change the following information for the record with teacher ID 55-5310. So double click teacher table. That'll open the content. We're looking for teacher ID 55-5310. So we're going to see that that's Alex Baltar, and the degree needs to be changed to a BM degree. And we also need to change the hire date to 3-12-2013. So hire date 3-12-2013. And I'm going to then save the table, close the table. Moving on to step number three. In the student table, find the record with the student ID HAV7535 and then delete the related record in the sub data sheet for this student. So let's open up the student table. So double click student table. And we are looking for student ID HAV7535. So if you do a control F for find, and you're looking for HAV7535 and hit enter, it should automatically locate that correct student. And just verify that you have that HAV7535 is correct. And it's wanting us to delete the sub data sheets. So click on the plus sign to the left of that main record, and you're going to see there is the sub data sheet record. If you actually click on that line item, That'll highlight the entire row, then right click, then delete record. Confirm yes, you want to delete the record. Continuing on with step number three, now delete the record for the student ID HAV7535 and then close the student table. So we're actually now going to select the entire student record, right click and delete record and say yes, you do want to confirm that. And if we close that student table. Now we are going to create a query based on the student table that includes the last name, first name, mobile number fields in that order. So student table, create, query wizard, simple query, click OK. We're on the student table. We want last name, so click on last name. Click the right arrow to move it to the selected fields. Click on first name. Click the right arrow. Click on mobile phone number. Click the right arrow. And so now we have last name, comma, first name, comma, mobile phone number fields. Click next. And this query is actually going to be student phone list. So change it to student phone list. Click finished. It should automatically run the query and show you that you have your list of 34 students. You can see down here at the bottom the record number one of 34 in your search criteria. So the query did run and so it confirmed that it did work. Okay, and the results of the student phone list Change the phone number for Andrea Barreau to 503-579-2271. So we've got to find Andrea, and that's going to be the second record. And we're changing it to 
five seven nine two two seven seven. So you're changing the last four digits of that number. I'm going to click the desk icon to save it and close the query. Moving on to step number six, we're going to use the design view to create a query based on the teacher and contract tables to display the last name field from the teacher table and the student ID, end date, lesson type, lesson length, and lesson cost fields in that order from the contract table. So we're going to start with the teacher table. We're going to go to home, double click teacher, click on view, click on design view. So we're now in the design view to create our query. So click on create tab, query design, and we want the teacher table so click on teacher click add and then we want the student or excuse me the contract table so click contract and add and that's the two tables that we'll be dealing with for this query so we're going to display the last name field from the teacher so we're going to click on last name and drag that down to the first column in the table view below. We're going to continue with the student ID information from the contract. So we'll click on student ID, drag it to the second column. We've got end date to the third column. And we want lesson type to the fourth column. And then we want lesson length in the fifth and lesson cost in the sixth. Now we want to sort in ascending order first on the teacher's last name. So we're going to sort ascending. Then we're going to move to ascending order by student ID. So click on student ID and ascending. And then we're going to save the query as lessons by teacher. So now we want to go save and this will be L-E-S-S-O-N-S -S -S, capital B Y capital T E A C H E R. Understand you do not want spaces in the query names. Click OK. We now have our query saved by lessons by teacher. Now if we close the design and we close the table and we double click the lessons by teacher, we should display the list of lessons by teacher, last name and then student ID, contract end date, lesson type, length, lesson length and lesson cost. You'll see you should have 46 records at the bottom and that confirms that the query did work using the design view. Now moving on to the display backstage view in step 7 and we're going to save this query lessons by teacher as current lessons. So we're going to go file save object as and we're going to change that to current lessons again no spaces in those names and click OK. Click on the home tab to bring us back to the table view. Now we're going to modify the current lessons query. So what we're doing is we're saving our steps that we went through instead of repeating everything in step six. We're starting with that existing lessons by teacher and creating a query using current lessons. Now we want to go display contracts that end on or after 7-1-2013. And this should be done by adding a single criteria using the greater than equal operator. And then we want to save our changes in current lessons query and run the query to make sure that it works. So we're going to go back to our design view and we want to 
contracts that end on or after. So we're looking for end date, and we want criteria. We want greater than or equal to 7 1 2013. Save. Close the current lessons. Double click current lessons. And you want to look at the contract end date to make sure that everything is 7 1 2013 or later. All right, so just quickly scanning down through. We now only have 37 records rather than the 46, so it looks like everything did work correctly in that query. Now, moving on to step number eight, we're going to display the backstage view and then save the current lesson query as current guitar lessons. So we'll file, save object as, and it's current guitar lessons. Click OK. Go back to home, and you're now showing the table view for current guitar lessons. Now we're going to modify the query. So go to view, design view, and now we're looking for lesson type of guitar. So we're going to type in the word guitar as the lesson type. Click save. going to close the query and now we're going to run that query to verify that only lesson type guitar displays and note that all guitar lessons are after 7 1 2013 and since it's based on the current lessons query now we're going to go on to step number nine and modify current guitar lessons query so that it does not display lesson type. So we'll go back to our design view, lesson type. We're going to uncheck the box because we don't want that field to display. Click the save option, close the query, double click the query, make sure it runs and you now see that that column no longer displays when we execute that query. Moving on to step number 10, in the current guitar lessons query data sheet, display the total row and show the total amount for the lesson monthly cost. So what we're wanting to do here is we're wanting to come up and click on totals. And then we're going to actually want the totals. When you click on that, it automatically adds that total view for you and gives you the down arrow box here. And so what we're wanting is the total. So we're going to do a sum of all of those, so you should end up with a lesson monthly cost of $1,400. And that's correct there. So now we want to select the entire table. And we're going to be moving on to step number 11. Now I want to change the alternate row color in the current guitar lessons query data sheet to the theme color named purple accent for lighter 60% and that's going to be in the third row eighth column and we're going to change the font size to 12. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here in the text formatting in this little alternate row color dialog box. We're going to click the down arrow. We're going to come over to the purple and we're going to scroll down until we highlight the purple accent for lighter 60% which is the third row down including the main color pattern so it's actually the second row in the uh, gradient scale so purple accent for lighter 60 you click that you'll notice that it changes the table view and then we're going to move up here and we're going to change the size from 11 to 12 and we're then going to save that formatting and we're going to close the query now we need to go to backstage view click on file compact and repair the database. Once that finishes, and then we can actually close the database and we're now ready to submit into SAM.